Comedy Hive News, I'm Ramil Thompson. There are many iconic performers that star in some of our favorite shows that gave us plenty of laughs growing up. These shows gave us representation and much needed guidance on life issues. From The Cosby Show to What's Happening to Good Times, these shows all have prominent African American representation. Another show that is in the same class as these is the legendary black sitcom, The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons is a 1970s black sitcom about a prosperous black family living in Manhattan, New York. The patriarch of the family, George Jefferson, was played by actor Sherman Hemsley. Sherman Hemsley is best known for his role as George Jefferson, as it is his most prominent acting role. George Jefferson was a selfish, loudmouth, brash, bigoted, opinionated character who worked his way up from the streets into a successful black businessman. Despite his problematic ways, George was still balanced as a loving husband and father. The Jeffersons is one of the longest running TV shows of all time, running from 1975 to 1985 with over 250 episodes. Hemsley's brilliance as George Jefferson has resulted in him being remembered as one of black Hollywood's most notable TV dads, which is why he will remain unforgotten. Sherman Alexander Hemsley was born on February 1st, 1938 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Allegedly, Sherman didn't meet his father until he was 14 years old. Growing up, Sherman first got experience in acting at school when teachers would have students perform different characters in various teaching exercises. He learned the power of laughter during his child plays. I was in a play in elementary school and had to jump up and run away. I was nervous and tripped and fell down and everyone laughed. Their laughter made me relax, so I pretended it was part of the show. Through middle school and high school, Sherman never took acting seriously and didn't have a clear direction for his life. Eventually, in his sophomore year of high school, he dropped out and went to the Air Force. When he returned from the service, he still felt unsure of what he wanted to do, so he chose to pursue acting seriously. He relocated to New York City because he had heard of the black performance groups such as the Negro Ensemble Company, which was known for getting actors roles. He worked as a post office clerk in the evenings and acting during the day. Hemsley made his professional acting debut on Broadway with the play Pearly in 1971 and toured with the play for a year. Eventually, Sherman would catch the eye of producer Norman Lear, who wanted him to be in the sitcom All in the Family. At the time, Sherman declined because he wanted to remain on tour with Pearly, but Norman said he'd keep the role open for him. The character of George Jefferson was created from this sitcom and was used as the black male counter to the loudmouth wise cracking Archie Bunker. Audiences loved the contrast between the characters, which prompted producers to conceptualize a spinoff with George Jefferson and his family. In the last episode of All in the Family, entitled The Jeffersons Move Up, a neighbor says goodbye and moves to a new high-rise apartment in Manhattan, setting the stage for the plot of the new spinoff show, The Jeffersons. As previously stated, the character of George Jefferson was meant as a black counter to Archie Bunker. An excerpt from NPR states, Hemsley's portrayal of the irascible, bigoted, and yet beloved George Jefferson on the sitcom, The Jeffersons, was popular with both black and white audiences in the late 1970s and early 1980s. 80s. The show was a spinoff from All in the Family, and George Jefferson in some ways was a black version of the white anti-hero Archie Bunker. The creation of George Jefferson character has been debated because of Cooley High director Eric Monte claiming he created George Jefferson and that Norman Lear stole the character from him. In an interview with the Philadelphia Inquirer, Monte said that Norman was racist, referencing the set on Good Times. Monte stated, I caught hell because Norman Lear was incredibly racist, but he didn't think so. And everything they wrote was stereotypic. They thought of black humor as, yes a boss, I always want to go down by the river, but I fight the them tooth and nail. They ignored in the offices. Take that Yasa stub down to the cast. John Amos, Esther Roll, and Jenna Dubois would have a fit. This story seems believable considering the history of idea theft of African Americans from white Americans. However, this claim never got any real traction behind it because of Monte's lawyers threatening to quit if he didn't accept the settlement. Monte was subsequently blackballed from the industry and struggled in life while Lear won awards on behalf of the Jeffersons. In the show, George Jefferson was a successful business owner of a dry cleaning business called Jefferson Cleaners after receiving a settlement because of a car accident. This resulted in a scenario in which the family was now relatively middle class, something much rarer for African Americans especially in the 70s. This representation is among some of the first to show African Americans in this light, something done to diversify the representation of African Americans. We can see how this inspired other middle class slash high class black sitcoms such as The Cosby Show and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air later on. In the earlier episodes of the show they tackle heavy themes such as alcoholism, drug abuse, racism, suicide, and even transgender issues, a topic not openly discussed very often back then. Racial slurs were normally used as a storytelling tactic as well. Additionally, the show was one of the first to feature an interracial couple, the couple of Tom and Helen Willis. George relatively ridiculed the couple for its interracial dynamic, referring to the couple as a zebra, providing many comedic moments for the show. Another character dynamic that provided many laughs was the relationship between George and their housekeeper Florence. Florence would normally make jokes about George's small stature and his hairline. George would have his own clapbacks, such as, 
class if I paid you to think you could cash your check at the Penny Arcade. George's loud, cantankerous, and brash ways provided much of the comedy and conflict in the show as he was often the problem and somewhat of a solution at the same time, displaying a nice balance of grumpy old man charm that resonated with audiences. In an interview with Television Academy, Sherman explains how the infamous strut that George had came out of them doing the intro scene over and over again, which prompted Sherman to walk more animated to add more flair to his character and to add the uppity of the character. I know the walk happened when we kept doing the scene where I would walk into the house. We just kept doing it. I was walking normal for a long time. Then all of a sudden, we did about seven to eight takes and I'm like, how many times do we have to do this? Then you start clowning around. That's the one they kept. It was a joke. Sherman stated in the same interview that he took his real life experiences and memories of growing up in South Philly to help him develop George's character and how the way you walk signified your importance. From the way he walked to the overall tone and energy of his voice, Sherman made sure that he portrayed George as authentically as possible and he made the character feel like a real person. The relationship between George and his wife Louise, portrayed by Isabel Sanford, has always been loved by audiences and is frequently referenced as one of the most popular TV couples in broadcast history. Louise provided much of the balance to George's overreactions to their financial success, reminding him of their humble beginnings and to not get too big headed. Off screen, many may not know that Sherman is 20 years younger than Sanford, but this made little to no difference to audiences as they were accepted as a believable couple. Coincidentally, according to the aforementioned TV Academy interview, Sherman had a real life crush on a woman named Louise who we call Wheezy, which prompted him to ask producers if he could refer to Isabel's character as Wheezy, creating the nickname. After 10 years of astronomical success, the show ended abruptly in 1985 with no series finale, disappointing and confusing audiences. Although the show's ratings had dropped, no one knows why the show didn't have a more satisfying end. Sherman said he found out that the show was going to be canceled after seeing it in a newspaper, something that is highly unprofessional on behalf of the show. Sherman and Isabel will reprise their classic roles in shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Tyler Perry's House of Pain. The characters making appearances decades after the show demonstrates the cultural impact of George Jefferson and The Jefferson Show. After the cancellation, Sherman was typecast as the same character in his other known projects. In the ABC series Amen, he portrayed the character of Ernest Fry, a church deacon who had many of the same selfish qualities similar to George Jefferson. In a 1991 interview with Bob Castus, Sherman explained that he loved portraying this archetype. I love having characters with a lot of energy, seeming like they're insulting people, but deep down inside, he's a lovable character. The key is the love. When you show some kind of love, then the people can relate to you. You can do all the mean things, but you just gotta come around to love, and that's the connection in all of us. In 1996, Sherman will make his last starring sitcom appearance in the show Good Behavior, which didn't last. Later, Sherman will make episodic appearances in shows like Family Matters, Sister Sister, and The Hughleys, all of which were inspired by the Jeffersons. One lesser known fact about Sherman is that he had music interest and was a talented jazz keyboardist and released a 1989 single called Ain't That a Kick in the Head, along with a 1992 album called Dance. His movie career isn't as extensive as his TV presence, but nonetheless, he was still relatively successful. He appeared in comedies such as Mr. Nanny, Love at First Bite, and American Pie Presents The Book of Love. Speaking of love, many questions were posed surrounding Sherman's romantic life as he was highly secretive and private about his personal affairs. There is a belief that Sherman was gay and lived with a male partner for years. This information was never confirmed by Sherman, but many assume this to be true since he never married nor had any children. His former manager, Flora Etchington, spoke of how she lived with Sherman and his friend Kenny Johnston and how they lived together for years until Sherman's passing. In 2012, Sherman died at the age of 74 after a battle with lung cancer. Colleagues and fans alike sent their condolences as he was finally remembered for his role of George Jefferson. Sherman Hemsley is a perfect example of someone who truly embodied a character to the fullest extent and created an undeniable legacy and was loved by everyone who knew him. I always told my mother I wanted a job where I could have a lot of fun and have a lot of time off. She asked me where I was going to find that, and I said I don't know, but it's out there. Sherman certainly found another career he told his mother he wanted and was acclaimed for his skills. Sherman's excellent portrayal of the loudmouth, selfish authority figure was one that kept him working for over 30 plus years and solidified him as an acting legend, which is why he will remain unforgotten. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Ramil Thompson.